In this tutorial, we'll have a look at some of the inbuilt filters that come with Mamba. They're generally the tools in this column, the deform column, and also the remap function here. We've looked at the warper before, and twirl and kaleidoscope are pretty simple. So a kaleidoscope does that, for example. So you're probably not going to need a tutorial on those. So let's firstly look at the remap function. So what remap does is it takes a line from a second image and uses it to process the colors in the first image. So for example, if I take a noise pattern and make it colorful and a little bit bigger and put that as a second input to remap, then what we get is our hero image is being reprocessed using the values that are in the second image. Essentially what happens is this. This line function here is saying which line to pick as a reference. In this case it's 50% down the screen, so halfway. So it looks at the incoming image and finds the line that's halfway down the screen. And for each RGB value that it finds in the hero image, it actually takes a value from this line, starting with black here and white here. So something that's very dark in the hero image would be converted to one of the colors here and something that's very light would be converted to one of the colors here. So we can use the remap function to create all manner of odd reproductions of our images. For example, if I changed the reference perhaps to something like this, a bunch of stripes, then we could start to get sort of interesting etching kind of looks. The other parameter in remap is cycle. The cycle function just basically changes where the sample comes from on the line. So rather than black being on the far left edge and white being on the far right edge, the samples actually just get pushed along and then wrapped around at the edges. So let's have a look at the other deform tools. I'm just going to switch this wipe to being a simple square and I'm going to take out its animation so it just stays still. So the deform tools work by causing a 2D deformation of an image based on luminance values that are provided to it. And those luminance values can either be the input's own alpha channel or it can be a second input. One thing to point out here is that refract, distort, bump and liquid bump are actually all the same effect. They all create an effect called relief the difference between them is they simply populate the parameters of relief differently to get you a different starting point with the effect. But by changing those parameters, you can actually move from one to the other of these quite easily. So I've started with the simple bump effect. So if I connect up this second input, we can just about see that in the shape of the second input that I've provided, we can see what looks like a gentle push out of the image. If I go into a displacement map, we can see that by default, there's a bit of a blur added to the image that's driving our deformation. If I take that off completely, we can see the outline of our second input more clearly. I'm going to put a little bit of a value in here because that will round off the edges of our 2D bump as this is. And underneath we can see the amplitude so we can build it up and make it higher or smaller. It'll go into negative values, so it'll go in or out. So what this is doing is it's making a fake bump it's not 3D. If I span this image around, it wouldn't actually stick out. It's just done with light and shade. We can change quite a few parameters about that light and shade in order to give ourselves different styles of look. For example, if I go into the Distort tab, there's a Refract option. So if I bring up this value, we can see that we're adding in refraction into the edges. And a little bit of anti-aliasing sometimes helps there. So you can see that I'm getting a glassier kind of effect. Going back to Displacement Map, there's a liquid mode on or off, which slightly changes how the edges are processed. Also, we have some controls for the ambient light. So in its default settings, the image will not have any light changes. And we can also control the light direction as well. As you can see, as I move this around, we're changing the apparent light angle onto the bump map. We can also change how shiny the main highlights are in controls in here.
And under the image tab, we can pre-process the image that's being refracted or bumped. An interesting aspect here is you'll notice that if I zoom down, we don't get black edges. Instead, this function mirrors and repeats infinitely the image. The reason for this is that if we were to bring in any black edges, they would likely start to appear in the refract, which would look ugly. So the same when we pan left and right, we actually get a mirror image coming in so that we never see black. One thing we might use this for is to heighten the idea of depth, because at the moment we can see that there's a refraction on the edge, but actually there's not much difference between the flat image and the bumped image. So what we could do is if we made a copy of the output of our original effect, and we'll just put that into a composite node, and that in as a second input. So now what's happening is that this relief is being keyed over the original, but we'll see that actually our original didn't have an alpha channel. So what we can do is under displace map, if we put the rebuild key on, it'll create a, an alpha channel based on the bump work that it's doing. And for example, if I were to change the blur, we can see that it is affecting how the cutout would appear. So the alpha channel now set, what I'm effectively doing is keying a bumped version over a straight version. So now if I go and play with those image settings, you can see that I'm only changing what's inside. So I can get a better feeling of depth or refraction or whatever it is that I'm trying to do. Then also, of course, in here, I could add in other effects like a color corrector, for example. So we could give our panel perhaps a little glassy look or something like that. Let's just go back to the straight effect. The last box down here, perspective, is only relevant if you have the stereo 3D option for your member. What this does is it creates a proper stereoscopic bump. So if I switch on my stereo mode and jump between the left and right image, we can see there's a, a bit of a difference, which is exaggerated by this number. So you can see that between the left and right images, there's some stereoscopic depth going on. Apart from using the relief function to cause these depth extrusions, we can also use it to create some 2D offsets. So just to get back to basics, I'm going to delete my relief effect and I'm going to go straight for the version that says distort. I remember we still have this as the driving image. So under the distort tab, what we essentially have is controls to take that luminance value of the driving image and say how it pushes X and Y pixels in a 2D direction. So as I change this on the X only, you can see two things about this. Firstly, that the background is going one way and the area inside our driving image is going the other. And that's because our zero is at 50%. In other words, 50% gray on the incoming driving image wouldn't make any effect. And anything lower than it will go in one direction and anything higher than it will go in the other direction. And the other you can see is there's a gradation between the two. And that, of course, is because by default, there's a blur in here, which we can switch off. So we can use relief in distort mode to create various 2D deformations to our images. because it's simply being driven by the luminance values to push X or Y in any given direction. So we can use it to create breakups and interference and all that sort of thing.